In this video, I'm going to show you how to find a multiple sclerosis clinical trial. Now, there are three main ways to do this. The first would be just to ask your doctor or your academic institution. That's fairly self-explanatory. The second would be to use this website, clinicaltrials.gov. And the third would be to go to multiple sclerosis charities, such as the National MS Society, which I'll show next. Now, I have a lot of respect for people who enter clinical trials. It's how we know essentially everything about multiple sclerosis therapeutics and whether they work and all of the safety concerns. So I really do uh, try to encourage people to enter trials if they are appropriate for the trials. Of course, there are good sides and bad sides to entering clinical trials. The good thing is that maybe there is no treatment that seems to be working well for you or there's no treatment that has acceptable side effects in your opinion and you can try something new and potentially better. The other good thing is there may be some economic advantages such as being able to get free medication and MRI scans and also clinical trials tend to be done pretty well and people are followed closely and sometimes they get better care overall. Of course the downside is that if it's a randomized trial you could get randomized to placebo which you may may or may not be comfortable with. But anyways, I'll show you how you'll find trials on this website. So you go to condition or disease and you type in multiple sclerosis. If you want to be more specific, you could type in specific subtypes such as relapsing remitting or primary progressive. And then you could put in other search terms like if you're looking for something specific, maybe a particular drug. And then you put in your location because obviously for certain trials like interventional trials it's not practical to go to study visits or get MRI scans if you're 300 miles away for instance so I am in California and I'm in the city of Downey which is south Los Angeles and let's say I want to find things within 50 miles and then you click search and a lot of things come up now if you look at the options here you can see that there are a lot of studies that aren't really applicable to what I'm looking for for instance this study is not yet recruiting on PET scans and people with multiple sclerosis some of these studies are already completed but let's say I'm looking for an actively recruited trial recruiting trial so I would click recruiting and then I would click apply and of course if you wanted to see completed trials to look at the results you certainly could do that as well and let's sort of pare this down and look at actively recruiting trials and let's take a look at the first few options. So the first study is a small pilot study to characterize the biological effect of stopping the drug natalizumab, which is Tysabri. So in other words, is it safe to stop Tysabri for 12 weeks or 3 months? What happens? Do people have relapses? What are the sort of biological effects? And this is actually done by one of my former mentors, Dr. Regina Berkovich. I work with her at USC, but I think she's in private practice now in West Hollywood. Uh, so let's look at the next option. The next study is also by someone I know, which is on estriol, which is a weak estrogen hormone in the treatment of multiple sclerosis, looking for effects on cognition. So this is probably done by Dr. Barbara Geyser at UCLA, and it's well known that estriol may have some benefits in multiple sclerosis. And you can see the types of multiple sclerosis they're looking for here. They're looking for basically any type of multiple sclerosis. And it looks like this is a randomized trial of estriol versus placebo. Placebo. So the next study, which is something I'm very familiar with and very interested in, is known as the Perseus study, and this is a randomized trial in primary progressive multiple sclerosis of the Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitor, tolibrutinib. And I'm very interested in this class of medications. And these letters and numbers, SAR442168, this is just sort of the preliminary name of this drug. Later on, there would be a trade name. And this is in primary progressive multiple sclerosis, a form of MS with limited treatment options and it's a randomized trial of tolibrutinib versus placebo. Now I'll click on this so we can see more details but I just want to show you there are some other ways to filter the search. So you can search for eligibility criteria. It can be very frustrating to click on different trials and see that you don't meet the age requirement for instance. So you can search by age for example if you're looking for a child or an adult or an older adult. You can search by sex. A lot of multiple sclerosis trials are for both sexes. And then you could also look, is it an interventional trial? Is it an observational trial? And you can look, for instance, for completed trials. Does it have results posted? And you could look at the phase of trials. So phase one and two would be like early research. Phase three would be a large randomized trial that would lead to FDA approval. And phase four is post-marketing studies for drugs that are already FDA approved. If you're interested, you could also look at the funding and the study documents if you want it to be really technical. But anyways, let's take a look in more detail 
on this Perseus study in tolibrutinib. So just to give a little background of the science, uh, this class of medication, brutin tyrosine kinase inhibitors, are used for some other diseases, and they're involved in cell signaling of immune cells, and it turns out that they have an effect on certain types of white blood cells in the central nervous system that may be involved in slow and smoldering inflammation. And so that's why they're thought to be a potential treatment for primary progressive multiple sclerosis. Also, they don't have that strong a, of an effect of weakening the immune system, so they may be safer than, say, the B cell depleters like Ocrevus in maybe an older person with primary progressive MS. So that's kind of theoretical background here. But let's take a look at the details of the study. So they say the purpose, which is to evaluate the safety and efficacy of the drug, obviously. And you can see the study design here. This is an interventional randomized trial. They're looking for around 1,000 participants. It's randomized, so you're randomized to either placebo or the drug. And they have blinding. In other words, the participant, which is you, the investigator, which is the researcher, and the person assessing the outcomes, they don't know whether you're getting placebo or tolibrutinib. And the official title is a Phase three Randomized Double-Blind Efficacy and Safety Study. And it started August 2020, and it's going to end in August 2024. So unfortunately, we're going to have to wait several years to see if this drug works or not. They're relatively early on. Then you can look at the outcome measures. So what are we measuring? And they're measuring six-month confirmed disability progression. In other words, they have you measure your level of disability by the EDSS, Expanded Disability Status Scale, and then they follow you and see if it gets worse. And they're hoping that less people will get worse taking the drug than placebo. Now, there are also secondary measures like three-month confirmed disability progression, the nine-hole peg test, which is sort of a test of upper extremity function where you put pegs into holes, the 25-foot walk. They're going to be doing MRI scans. They're going to look at disability improvement. They're going to look at brain volume, so using fancy software to evaluate MRIs. They're going to check the cognitive function with the symbol digit modalities test. And the reason it's important to know all of this is you want to see how involved the study is. Do you really have the time in order to do this study and follow through with all of the requirements? And they're going to look at some blood tests for safety, and they're going to look at uh, plasma neurofilament, for example, and different subclasses of white blood cells for safety purposes. Now, here's the important part, the eligibility criteria you want to see if you're actually a candidate for this study. So unfortunately, this study is for people 18 to 55 years old. So unfortunately, if you're 56 and have primary progressive MS, they wouldn't accept you to the study. Now, as a side note, I'm against this age restriction. The reason they do this is because, unfortunately, older people, they kind of tend to get sicker overall. They're more likely to have side effects of drugs. They're more likely to get other medical conditions that aren't even related to the drug. And and so the company, they want to be very cautious, and they also kind of want to make their drug look good by giving it to people who are likely to have the least side effects and have the best response. Now, I'm against this personally just because I think, hey, there are a lot of people with primary progressive MS who are older, and we need to know if this drug works for them or not, and if it's safe for them or not. So we really need that data. I think they should include people at least up to age 70. And these are the inclusion criteria, so you have to have primary progressive MS. You have to have a certain level of disability, so you have to have an EDSS between 2 and 6.5. So if you're less than 2, that's a very mild disability. You probably don't have primary progressive MS in the first place. So at EDSS 6, that's the level of disability where a cane is required to walk 100 meters. And at 6.5, it means you need a walker to walk. So to get in this study, you at least have to be able to walk with a walker. They look at the duration of disease, so you have to have symptom onset. Uh, you have to have had the disease for less than 15 years if your EDSS is greater than 5, and if it's less than 10 years, your EDSS has to be less than or equal to 5. They actually want you to have a positive spinal tap. So if you never had a spinal tap, they may make you do one to get into the study. And I think this is just to exclude people who may be less likely to benefit from the medication and also to decrease the probability of including people who have a wrong diagnosis. Unfortunately, a lot of people with a diagnosis of MS don't actually have MS. And they have some other requirements. And then the other thing is the exclusion criteria. So there are a lot of things that could prevent you from getting into these studies. For instance, you can't be really sick and have a short life expectancy. You can't have 
a history of an organ transplant, you can't have HIV or progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy or active hepatitis B or, or C or latent tuberculosis or other infections. You can't have had cancer within the last five years. You can't have alcohol or drug abuse within the last year. You can't have been hospitalized for psychiatric disease within two years. And a lot of other lab, laboratory abnormalities that may make the drug less safe, for example. So you have to look very carefully at these exclusion criteria. And then you can kind of scroll down to the contact information. So if you are interested in this trial, you could actually call this phone number or you could send this email and or you could go to the recruitment website and I'll show you that in a second. Now, of course, you want to look at the study location. So there are 223 study locations and the ones closest to me would be, for instance, in Long Beach is very close. Arcadia and Torrance are also fairly close to, to me. So you want to make sure there's something close to you. Now, if you wanted to sign up, one way to do it would be to call this number or send this email, or you could go directly to the recruitment website. And this doesn't appear for every single trial. And so we're going to leave to the recruitment website. So mymstrials.com is basically Sanofi's recruitment website. And if you want to see if you can get into this trial, you basically have to fill out all of your information here. And another way to do the same thing is to go to the National MS Society website. And here's their website for clinical trials. And I'll I'll include the link in the show notes below. And the advantage of this is it's a little bit more straightforward in that there isn't so much text and different exclusion and inclusion criteria to read through. But the bad thing about this is you may run into some dead ends where you're looking into a trial and you email the person and then you don't really meet the criteria or it's just not appropriate for you. But this is much simpler to use in a lot of ways. I think the clinical trials website is more geared towards investigators and maybe the more sophisticated people with diseases. But if you're watching that video, that probably does include you. And so you can put in your location. I'm in California and I'll put in primary progressive MMS. And again, you could put in some key words if you want to, and then just click search and see what comes up. So here you can see the trials that come up, primary progressive MS for California. So one thing that sticks out to me is the RECOVER trial. I'm very familiar with this. This is a study of clomastine, a potentially remyelinating agent in multiple sclerosis. And I have a separate video on it if you want to take a look. And you can just click Get Details, and you can read the basic description. And so they're looking for all types of multiple sclerosis. And this is a myelin-repairing you know, drug. And it's only 70 subjects. So this is very early. This is not a phase 3 trial. This is more like a phase two style trial. And you can see the primary investigator is Tracy Tran and here is her contact information, which is interesting. I thought it was Dr. Ari Green who originally was doing this trial, but maybe it's someone else now. And you can see, you know, who they're looking for and what the purpose is. And you'll note they don't have complicated inclusion and exclusion criteria for. You would just have to contact them and find out more. But anyways, uh, you know, I hope this was helpful to you. I'd be really interested to know, have you ever entered a multi multiple sclerosis clinical trial? Uh, did, did that trial lead to an actual approved product? And how did you do in the trial? And what was that experience like? And do you have any suggestions for future videos? And I want to say just once again, for anyone who's participated in clinical trials and been brave enough to do it and contributed to our advancement of the science, I want to give you a thank you because you really have changed the world for people with MS forever. And I think we'll see things in the next generation that we never could have imagined because of people like you.